Hello and welcome to photowalkthrough.com. This is tutorial 4, chapter 2. In last week's show, we uh, picked up the image you can see here. Um, we scored a whole bunch of images. We converted this image from a RAW file to a uh, JPEG that we're working, sorry, a PSD that we're working on in Photoshop. And I went through, I did a lot of talking. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't do much photo editing, which is perhaps what I'm here for. But I, I don't want this show just to be about um, about Photoshop. There are plenty of Photoshop tutorials out there, loads of Photoshop videos. I want this to be about photographs. I want this to be about um, not just the technical side of it, but also some of the intent side of it, some of the, the reasons why we do things. Um, but before we get into that, um, I'll go through my usual list of things. Um, if you haven't voted for us on Podcast Alley this month, please consider doing that. If you um, want to vote for us on the Yahoo pro podcast site, that would be great as well. And also, uh, don't forget the Flickr group. Uh, we've got a, a, a small but growing band of uh, people there posting their images um, and critiquing. Uh, I always try and critique any any images people post to the group. Um, but uh, but please do join the Flickr group, post any images that you've got that you're proud of or that uh, came out of listening to the show here. And um, and I will consider trying to use some of those in the special shows that I mentioned, um, doing uh, critiques of listener uh, and sorry of viewer pictures. Um, so please do let me know if you're happy for those images to be used in that way. Uh, right, uh, this image um, we mentioned last week. Uh, I'll just do a quick recap of the things that we're going to do to it. First of all, um, I'm trying to represent motion, and I've, I've got these circles in this image that I particularly want to bring out. Um, and one of the things that's wrong here is, is Richard's, Richard's face here is facing the wrong direction. Um, so I'm going to replace his head with with one that's looking in the right direction. Um, I've also got some bright areas here that I and also a lot, all the way along the bottom of the image that I want to brighten up. I've got some dark areas here that are just shadowed areas that I want to uh, brighten up. Um, sorry, these these bright areas at the bottom I want to dim down, of course, not not brighten up. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to just bring the whole image, which is strongly. Um, we've got a lot of. Sort of uh, strong direct sunlight here, um, which is causing us some exposure issues uh, that I'm going to attempt to address. So, um, before I do that, um, I need to get the pixels right. Before I get the light right, I need to get the pixels right. And the most important thing I need to get right first is to replace this head, um, because the head I'm going to replace it with is also going to be shot in st strong sunlight. So, before I, I get that right, let me pop back to um, Bridge. And let's go back to our workspace, the scoring images workspace that we looked at last week. Um, and incidentally, I didn't show you this last week, but I'll, I'll show you now. Um, if you've got a layout that you want, if we go back to the default workspace, this is how Bridge regularly looks. Um, and if you've got things that you don't want here, um, if you've got preview, which I think is too small to be useful, metadata, which is only occasionally useful, um, so I tend to close those down. I prefer the folders view instead of the favorites view. And I perhaps like my images a little larger. And if you want to save that that particular layout, you go to Window, Workspace, Save Workspace, and enter a name for your layout. And that's it. You've got now in there, if I just go to a different layout, that's my score images layout. I can go back to my, my own layout just by choosing I perhaps did that, did that a bit quick. Window, workspace, and then you've got your own layouts here. And you can also give them control key combinations like this if you want to. Um, so in this case, I want score images. I'm looking for an image where we've got Richard's head looking in the right direction. That one's not bad, actually. But I'm thinking more about one that's in the right sort of proportion with the rest of the image. So let's just go down. The one that I'm chosen is to work on, that's my base image that I'm working on. That one is not bad. That one's Richard looking in sort of a forward direction. I think that one's going to be the one. So um, what I'm going to do now, just to make sure that I get the same uh, colors and brightness values as the sh th this, remember, is the shot that I'm working on for real. So I'm going to shift select both of those. So I've now got both of them highlighted. And I'll open in camera raw. And remember, this raw dialog is too big. Um, but uh, you can see the bit that I need you to see here. That's my that's my source image, which I did the raw conversion on last week. If I shift and select that one as well, which is the one that I want the head from, and then I press synchronize, 
The one that's got the blue border around it here is the one that we're going to be taking the synchronized data from. So I press synchronize. I want to synchronize all of that. I'm just going to press OK. And now this image here has got exactly the same raw processing values as as the source image that I'm going to be pasting the head into. So I want that image there. Um, once again, you can't see it, but off the bottom here, there's an open button. Um, so I'm just going to click. Just with that one selected, I'm going to click that open button. It says open one image, and that will open that one image in Photoshop alongside, or on top of, in fact, the other image. So let's just go back to I'll get this back to a view that you might recognise. In fact, why don't I just do workspace 800 by 600? This is this is my workspace for recording these videos. It's I don't normally work at 800 by 600. Um, so here's our here's our image that I want to grab the head from, and I'm just going to grab the um, the lasso tool, and I'm just going to draw around that head there, and then I'm going to edit copy, which anybody that's worked with Windows for any reasonable time will know is Control C, um, and I can now minimise that and go back to my real image, and here I'm going to edit paste, which is Control V. And here is the head that I want pasted in. Now, um, the way I tend to work in Photoshop, let me just close that other image because I don't need that now. And it saves a bit of memory. Uh, these are quite large images. Um, so it saves me a bit of memory just to, just to only have one Im image open at a time. Um, now, the way I regularly work is I press the F key to go full screen. Um, and then you've got, and then you hold down the space bar to drag these around. And here, he, here is my new head layer. If you hold down the control key, your cursor changes to this little four-way pointing arrow thing, and you can drag that layer around. And you can see I'm, I'm going to be able to place it there, but let's let's zoom in on that. I'm zooming in using the, the scroll wheel on my mouse, which is in the preferences. If you go to general preferences, uh, I think I showed you this last time, zoom with scroll wheel. Really useful if you've got a mouse with a wheel on it. Um, now, what I'm going to do, just so that I get this head positioned nicely, because you can see the chains aren't right, and it, it doesn't quite sit cleanly on his shoulders. You can see a, a break there. You can see a break there. Um, I'm going to drag the opacity of this layer down to about 50%, so that we've got this sort of dual view thing here. Um, and the first thing that, that, that I can see is, well, in fact, it's most visible from the chains. The um, the chains are not facing in the same direction, so I need to rotate this a little bit. So I'm going to press Control T, which is Free Transform. That's also available from the Edit menu, Free Transform there. And I'm just going to rotate that just a little bit, just so that the chains line up. Uh, I can. It was shot in roughly the same position. I stood and waited for these guys to come round and round um, until they were in roughly the right position each time. You can see that I, I need to drag this just a little bit larger. So I'm holding down the shift key um, when I grab these corners. That's so that it, 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 ex it expands in proportion. If I don't hold down the shift key, um, it will do. It will allow me to stretch. If I hold down the shift key, it snaps back to being in the right proportions. So if I drag that back to about there, the chains are roughly lined up now, which means that his head should be about the right size for his body, which is handy. And I'm going to press return. And once again, use the control key to drag around. Put his shoulders roughly on top of each other. That's about about right. Maybe you can use your arrow keys here. Um, if you hold down the control key and use the arrow keys on the keyboard, you can nudge these things around as well. That's probably about the right place. If I drag the opacity back up to 100%, there's his, there's his new head on his body. And at this point... I'm going to grab the eraser tool, which is this tool here, um, and I'm going to shrink my brush down because it's enormous. And I'm just going to erase pretty much everything but his but his head and neck um, on this on this pasted in layer. Um, in particular, I don't want the pasted in bits of the chain because they're not quite in the right place. So look, you can see there's a bit of a chink in the chain there. 
Uh, let's just zoom right close in on the top of his head to get this bit right. I've still got the eraser. Could use the smallest eraser I can get away with. And I'm just painting up to the top of his head. So there. Right, and we can zoom back out. And there's another bit that's wrong here. That bit of chain is now straight. Um, I've got a bit of double shoulder there. So I'll just if if where where it, where it looks wrong, I'm going. I'm erasing off the new layer and uh, putting basically the original layer back in. So that's the original version of the head. That's the new version of the head. And as I change that, I see I've got a bit that's wrong here, and a bit that's wrong here, and a bit that's wrong here. And I'm also seeing a line just there. I'm not sure whether this is visible on your video version of this. Um, but that is now just the head changed. Um, I notice there's a slight bit wrong there. So I'm changing my brush size. Uh, I always mention this, but it's a really, it's probably the most useful shortcut key. Uh, the square brackets, which are just to the left on, on a British keyboard, they're just to the left of the enter key. Um, uh, it's come to my attention that on um, Central European keyboards of various types, uh, the square bracket keys are not in the same place. Um, you can change your uh, keyboard shortcuts in the edit menu. Um, and I do recommend getting some keys set up. I won't, I won't go through that today, but getting some keys set up to increase and decrease the size of your brush. It's just one of the most useful things uh, I've come across. Um, so that's his head changed. Richard's got a new head. He will be pleased. Um, that's the first thing I wanted to do today. The next thing I want to do, just looking at this image, as I said before, we've got lots of... Um, very bright sunlight here, um, which is which has meant that some of the brighter areas are are too bright, some of the darker areas are too dark, um, and there's a, a technique um, for selecting the highlights of an image, which um, I need the background layer. In fact, what I'm going to have to do in order for this to work, um, I'm going to have to create a new layer that contains everything we see, including the new head. So, if I create a new layer which is control alt shift n and then stamp everything visible um, which is control alt shift e um, and uh, something i should mention these these videos are also for mac users um, control is command on the mac and alt is option on the mac so uh, command option shift e would give you stamp visible into the new layer we've just created so that, that's something i do quite often um, on the PC, Control Alt Shift N, Control Alt Shift E, in that order. So N makes a new layer, E stamps everything visible, and on the on the Mac, that's Command Option Shift N, Command Option Shift E. Um, now I'm actually not going to keep this layer around, but what I am going to do is I'm going to um, select the bright portions of this image, um, which is uh, Control Alt and then the key that is left of the one key on your keyboard, um, which does change depending on which country you're in. Um, and it selects all the brightest portions of the image. So on, on, an, on a Mac, command option and uh, that button to the left of the one. On an American keyboard, it, keyboard it's the tilde key. Uh, on a British keyboard, it's the back quote key. And I have no idea what it is in a German or Dutch or French or anywhere else keyboard. But it'll be that one in the very top left of your keyboard, just underneath the escape key. Um, so that selects all the brightest portions, and in actual fact, um, if you do the same again with a 1, or the same again with a 2, it selects progressively more or less of the of the image. Um, so it, 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 we've got those regions selected, um, and then we're going to do Control c to copy them, Control v to paste them, um, and that pastes those selected areas into a new layer. I can now throw away that layer that I created with this, with everything stamped in it, and I'll change this new layer to multiply mode, which, as you see the image, if I turn it off and on, you can see that darkens everything down. And what it's doing is it's it's um, grabbing all of the brightest portions of the image. In fact, let me just if I alt click on that eye there, you can see 
uh, what's actually selected. So we've got quite a lot of the sky which is quite bright at the bottom here. You can see some blue here. You can see some yellow here. You can see the green which is very bright. Um, and it's setting it multiply which remember these sections of this uh, of this uh, uh, blending modes here. Um, we've got two normal ones. We've got four that darken. We've got four that lighten. We've got seven that increase contrast and multiply is the one that I always tell you to use if you want to darken the image so setting this the brightest parts of the image in a layer and then choosing the multiply mode darkens those brightest parts down and it just brings everything more together in terms of lightness values it will of course initially make the image look dark uh, but we'll correct that um, and in actual fact with this particular image uh, everything was so dark that I'm actually going to duplicate this layer again just by dragging that uh, dim highlights layer down but this time the areas that I'm concerned about are the faces that that really is too much darkening and I don't want the whole thing that darkened um, so I'm going to add a layer mask to it which is pressing the layer mask button down here and I'm going to fill that layer mask with black black is my foreground color but if it's not you can get back to the foreground color of black just by pressing D and then X um, remember, deselect black and white as your image as your, as your colors. X switches those foreground and background colors back and forth. Um, and then, by clicking on the layer mask, I'm going to Alt Delete, which on a Mac would be Option Delete. And as you saw, that brightened the image back up because it's just hidden that adjustment layer. Um, it's hidden the effects of that adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to zoom in just on the two faces and. Uh, with my brush tool I hit B to get the brush tool I hit X without even thinking about it there just to get white which is going to reveal the adjustment layer and I'm just going to paint that dimming layer in on the faces I, the faces the faces in photographs are quite often where you look first um, and I don't want those faces to be uh, over bright I don't want those faces to look overexposed um, so I've just painted that adjustment layer in on the faces, particularly on Ruth's face. I think actually Rich's face is a little bit more tanned. Um, so it doesn't need it quite so much there. But if I just turn that layer on and off, you can see that's without it. That's with it. It just brings it a little bit back more towards midtones. And that's good because I know that the next thing I'm going to do is add a contrast curve. Um, so let's, let's do that now. Uh, let me just rename these. it's very useful to name your layers later on when you come back and look at the image and try and figure out what you did uh, you'll be grateful that you named your layers to tell yourself what you did um, and in actual fact here's another quick keystroke that I learned the other day which I'm very pleased with you can you can select multiple layers by clicking on one and shift clicking on another and then if you hit control G for group it creates a group which you can also name and those those groups really tidy up your layers palette, makes it makes things a lot easier to manage. So Control G, that's my my tool, uh, my keystroke of the day. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do, I said, is um, add a strong contrast curve. So I'm going to do a new layer here. I'm going to go to Curves, and this is the Curves window that you've seen before that pops up. Oops, I was just trying to make that a bit smaller. Right. So here's our curves window. Um, I'm just going to try and drag this somewhere so you can see the image behind. What I'm trying to do here is achieve two things. Um, first of all, I've dimmed the, dim the image down a lot. I've dimmed all the highlights down. So I, I need to correct for that by brightening the whole image up. Um, so I'm going to drag in the middle of the image and just drag up and brighten things up a little bit. That looks pretty good. And the other thing I want to do, um, I said at the start, I want these, these images to be very brightly colored. I want them to be um, high contrast. Um, I want them to just skirt the line between real and false. And um, the way to get um, high contrast is to add an S curve. Um, and in this case, I, I want it mostly brightening, a brightening layer and also a contrasting layer. So. I've done a little bit of darkening at the bottom and mostly brightening at the top. So this is mostly, if I turn the preview on and off, it mostly brightens, but it also adds contrast. And when you add contrast, you also boost color saturation. 
So I'm doing sort of three things all at once here. I'm brightening the image, I'm darkening the, the shadow areas to add contrast, and I'm adding adding um, uh, saturation to my colours all in one go, um, which is achieving many of the aims of this image. So that's that's a reasonably good contrast layer, uh, contrast curve. Um, another thing that that, that uh, I did want to mention. Um, when we were looking at the image in the raw converter, there was some blue dots appearing to show that the certain areas were underexposed and we were losing shadow detail. Um, and I said at the time I didn't want to lose it in the raw converter, and that if I was going to do anything like that, I would rather do it in Photoshop. This here, this curve that I'm adding here, is where I'm doing that. I am actually underexposing certain areas now, and it's fine. I don't mind. It's not a problem. Um, what's important for me about this photograph is having people um, look at the photograph and see maybe the shapes or, or the actions or whatever it is I wanted to show them. I'm not concerned with having every bit of the, the image uh, beautifully exposed. It's not a technical exercise. Um, I could do that if I wanted to, but it would the, old, the whole image would look grey. It wouldn't necessarily reflect the fairground atmosphere that I wanted to capture. So uh, it's okay that I'm losing shadow detail. That's fine. Um, Shadow detail isn't really where your eye naturally looks, first of all, anyway. It's not important to this image to have good shadow detail. So there's my curve layer. I'm going to press OK on that. Um, and I think I'm probably going to stop there for today. Um, what I'll do in the next tutorial is, um, because we've added contrast, you can see that this area underneath the top is starting to get a little bit gloomy. Um, it's going to need more light there. And we've still got this problem with there being more light along the bottom of the image, particularly on the top of the booth. This is the payment booth for this ride. Um, it's got a, a bit a bit over bright there. So we'll deal with that, um, and we'll just generally finish the image off. Uh, the next tutorial will be the final tutorial on this image. Um, that will be Chapter 3. Um, in the meantime, um, please continue to post your images in the Flickr group if you've got any that you're proud of. Um, and uh, don't forget to vote on uh, Podcast Sally. Uh, that's everything for this week. Thank you very much. I will catch you next week.